What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here. Going to be counting down the top 10 cards from Forbidden Light, Pokemon's brand new expansion due to drop on May 4th. I am super stoked about this set. I think there's a lot of awesome cards in it, and I am excited to run down my personal top 10 list with you guys. I've done pretty good on my last two top 10s. I think I predicted the best card out of Crimson Invasion was going to be Buzzwool GX, have to say that I was definitely correct on that one. And then obviously Ultra Prism, Cynthia, that was a no brainer. For this set, it is up for deliberation though. I think that the top card is not nearly as clear as it was in the last two sets. So what do you guys think it's gonna be? Let's get right down to it. At the number 10 spot, we've got Ultra Space, which is a brand new stadium card, and it reads, once during each player's turn, that player may search their deck for an Ultra Beast card, reveal it, and put it into their hand, and shuffle their deck. So, this is a unique thing, because it allows us to search Ultra Beast. We don't really have any card specifically that searches Ultra Beast yet, so it does fill that niche. Typically in the game, stadium cards that provide surge effects are really good. We have Brooklet Hill, which has proved that so far. Definitely a good card. Search is always good, allows you to set up your deck. In the future, I mean, we're getting Ultra Beast Pokemon that do evolve. Not all Ultra Beasts are basic Pokemon. Specifically, we've got Nagandel uh, GX, which is a brand new Ultra Beast GX that's going to be coming out in Forbidden Light. And Nagandel does more damage based on the number of Ultra Beasts in play. So, of course, you can't search out Nagandel with something like a Nest Ball. So, having the free search of Ultra Space is pretty good. And I do like that as an option for decks revolving around Nagandel, or just decks that utilize Ultra Beasts in general. I imagine that if we do get some more evolution type Ultra Beasts, that Ultra Space could be a very valuable card for them, but it's not necessarily a great game-breaking card, and there are a lot of other Pokemon search options available at this time, which is why I've got it at the number 10 spot. At number nine, we've got Nagandel GX, a psychic type stage one ultra beast Pokemon with 210 hit points. Now, Nagandel GX has three attacks. The first one is the attack that's got most people talking. It's called Beast Raid, and for one colorless, this attack does 20 damage for each of your Ultra Beasts in play. So, in standard format, that means you could have six Ultra Beasts in play. That means you could do 120 damage for one energy, which is pretty good. We've got a lot of other Pokemon in format that do 120 for one energy. Lucario GX comes to mind. Also, Golisopod GX. So, it kind of fits right in there with those other stage ones that do 120 damage for just one energy but the cool thing about Nagandel is that it's psychic type so it means it hits Buzzwool for weakness and it is also it takes colorless energy in order to attack meaning that it can be splashed into just about any deck it's also an ultra beast so it gains access to cool buffers such as ultra space which is a stadium allowing you to search it out it also gets beast energy which means that you could add 30 damage to its damage output just by finding your beast energy and attaching to it. And you could also use beast ring in order to power this thing up. So it does come with those bonuses as well. It's last two attacks, Jet Needle for a Psychic and two Colorless. This attack's not affected by weakness or resistance, does 110 damage, pretty vanilla. But the GX attack is pretty wild as well. For three colorless energy, says each player shuffle their prize cards into their deck. Then each player puts the top three cards of their deck face down as their prize card. So I can imagine some sort of deck or scenario where maybe Nagandel is used in a control deck where you're starting off to an extremely slow start trying to build up some sort of lock and then maybe you stinger gx level level the playing field maybe your opponent is close to winning and then you stinger gx in order to level things back out while also bringing yourself down three prizes if you have not taken any prize cards yet so maybe stinger gx is useful in a very slow grindy deck i'm not exactly sure but the card does seem unique it 
does knock out Buzzwool in one hit if you've got a fair number of Ultra Beasts in play. So the card could be pretty good. That's why it's at the number nine spot. Coming in at the number eight spot, we've got Zygarde GX. My boy, my man. He's got 200 hit points. That is pretty wild for a basic Pokemon GX. It's actually got some pretty good attacks as well. Zygarde GX, 200 hit points. That means with the Fighting Fury Belt, we're talking 240 hit points on this thing. That's more than Gardevoir GX on a basic Pokemon. Totally insane. Now it's got three attacks as is the case with most Zygarde EX or GX cards, so I'm pretty happy to see that in typical Zygarde fashion. It's first attack, Cell Connector, for two colorless energy, does 50 damage, attach two fighting energy cards from your discard pile to this Pokemon. So, a nice little acceleration attack. It only does 50 damage, but that can easily be boosted higher with things like Strong Energy, Diancie, Choice Band, Fighting Fury Belt. There are a bunch of different ways to boost that damage output. You could easily be doing 100 damage with Cell Connector or even more. I mean, you could do, if you've got like two Strong Energy, that's 90 plus a Choice Band, that's 120 plus a Diancie, that's 140. You could knock out a Zoroark with cell connector while also accelerating energy to yourself so that's pretty cool second attack lands wrath just like that zygarde ex that three energy attack on zygarde ex lands wrath this one's four energy instead of doing 100 damage like on zygarde ex this one does 130 costs a little more energy does a little more damage that's pretty cool and it's just a nice vanilla attack 130 can easily get upwards of 200 damage with those damage mods modifiers like I had said previously a couple strong energies in the mix and a choice band we're easily up in the 200 damage ballpark which is awesome for knocking out most Pokemon EX and GX in the game then of course we've got the attack that's got everybody talking about Zygarde Verdict GX for two fighting and two colorless does 150 damage and with the added bonus, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX during your opponent's next turn. So it makes it invincible to Pokemon EX and GX, which is pretty nuts. Combine that with the fact that you can use the supporter card Bonnie to allow Zygarde GX to use its GX attack over and over again makes Zygarde GX wall kind of a neat sounding idea, right? You can use Zygarde GX, make yourself invincible, play Bonnie, do it again. Pretty cool stuff. Verdict GX can easily get up over 200 damage with those damage modifiers. This thing is a absolute beast, and I'm excited to see if anybody can make this deck work, and I'm sure that somebody will. So Zygarde GX rocking that number eight spot on our top 10. Moving right along to number seven, we've got everybody's favorite frog Pokemon, Greninja GX. Greninja has seen a ton of play in standard format, even expanded a little bit in the form of Greninja Break. And just as Greninja is about to rotate out of standard, we get a brand new Greninja Pokemon. Wonder if Pokemon likes Greninja. It seems like it. This thing's got 230 hit points for a stage two. And what makes Greninja cool is the ability. We've got Shuriken Flurry. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may put three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, this may sound very familiar. This is the same ability that Crobat had from Phantom Forces. And what's even cooler is that the Frogadier has the same ability that Golbat had from Phantom Forces, which allows you to snipe 20 on evolution. So the the Frogadier line allows you to snipe 20 on evolution, and then the Greninja line snipes 30 on evolution. Pretty cool stuff. This is definitely throwing back to that Crowback line, and it reminds me very much of it. It's the same concept, except this thing is rocking 230 hit points, meaning that it can definitely wall. You can put this in the active position after you've sniped with the ability. Your opponent hits into it. You ace roll it up. Use it again. Keep laying it back down. Pretty cool stuff. 
stuff. People are talking about playing Greninja GX with Zoroark GX, and Zoroark allows you to draw cards, and then Greninja can help Zoroark hit those numbers that it was never able to hit on its own with Riotous Beating. So pretty cool stuff there. You could also play Water Energy, if you want to, and use Greninja's attacks, which are not even bad. Greninja's first attack, Haze Slash, for a water and two colorless energy. You may shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck, does 110 damage. So respectable damage output, and it puts the Greninja line back into the deck, which is awesome because then you can continue to evolve the Greninja line back up, piling more and more damage onto your opponent's side of the field. Then the GX attack, Shadowy Hunter GX, for a water and two colorless energy. This attack does 130 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Don't apply weakness and resistance for benched Pokemon. This is amazing because it jives perfectly with the sniping ability of Greninja, allowing you to take out whatever threat you deem most threatening on your opponent's side of the field. Shadowy Hunter GX can be used to quickly take something off your opponent's side, be it a Garbodor or just a Pokemon that you don't want to see evolve up, a Curlia, something like that. Pretty cool just being able to handpick whatever you want to knock out on your opponent's side of the field. Definitely like that. I think Greninja is going to find its way into some archetypes, be it a spread deck or something like that, or alongside Zorark, like I said, there will be a way to play Greninja. I am pretty sure of it, which is why it is number seven on our top 10 list. At the number six spot, we've got Beast Energy. Now, this is an insane energy card. It's a sweet prism card as well, meaning that we can only play one of them in our decks. But if we could play any more than one, this thing would be absolutely busted. It adds 30 damage to the attacks of your Ultra Beast when it is attached to them. It also counts as one of any energy type, which is amazing. So it can be splashed in any deck that plays Ultra Beast and gives you a nice plus 30 bump to those Pokemon that it is attached to. That is awesome. Now, it's all the way down at number six. It is a one of card, meaning that it's not gonna be incredibly influential. I also think it's not searchable, you know? That's kind of what makes it my number six card and not as high as a more searchable prism card like Pokemon that our prism can be searched out with Ultra Ball or with Brooklet Hill or something like that. It's easy to pull that one of out of your deck in order to get it when you need it. Beast Energy is kind of like nice when you find it. It's like a choice band that you can't search out with Skyla or anything else, but also counts as your energy. So I do think that Beast Energy is going to be an awesome card. I think it is going to see a lot of play. But from here on out, things get very heated and this list gets very tight. All the rest of the cards that are in this list are insane. You can make an argument for any of them to be in the top five. I think Beast Energy is going to go awesome in Buzzwell. You could also play it in Ultra Necrozma GX decks to fulfill the requirement of that metal energy while also boosting your damage output on those Ultra Beasts. I think that Beast Energy is going to find its way into almost any deck that plays Ultra Beast Pokemon. It's just that good. Counts as your energy attachment, also a choice ban all in one pretty good card, which is why it's at our number six. At the number five spot, we've got Ultra Necrozma GX. This thing is hyped through the roof alongside the brand new Malamar and for good reason. This thing has got it all. It's got 190 hit points. It is a dragon type as well. Weak to fairy, but who cares when you can do infinite damage? This thing is absolutely nutty and reminds a lot of players of the old school Rayquaza EX from Dragons Exalted that went in that old Ray Eels list. And what's even cooler is that the the new Malamar is just like the Electric from Noble Victories, meaning that some players are hoping for a Ray Eels revival in the form of Ultra Necrozma GX and Malamar. And I think that they've got good reason to believe the hype. Photon Geyser is the attack that's got 
everybody talking about this card. For a Psychic and a Metal, you do 20 plus damage, and it reads, discard all basic Psychic Energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 80 more damage for each card you discarded in this way. That means with a Metal and two Psychic Energy attached, you discard the two Psychic, you're doing 180 damage. With the Choice Band, that's a perfect 210. You're knocking out the likes of Zorark GX, you easily knock out Buzzwool GX. You can also knock out Galisopod, Lucario GX, Lycanroc GX, any of these popular Pokemon easily disposed of with just two energy discarded, which is awesome. If you need to do more damage, you just pile on more psychic energy with three psychic energy discarded. You're doing what, like 260 damage, something like that. Yeah, 24 plus 20, 26, you're doing 260 damage. That's an insane amount of damage for really not that many energy. For comparison, you got Duskmane Necrozma, takes four energy, has to discard three, and does 220. So Photon Geyser easily competes with that attack, and we have Malamar, which can power this thing up. Ultra Necrozma GX also has a GX attack for a Psychic and a Metal. Sky Scorching Light GX, you can use this attack only if the total of both players' remaining prize cards is six or less. Put six damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. I think that's a little bit counterintuitive to the point of a Ultra Necrozma GX deck, if you ask me. You don't really need to snipe all of your opponent's Pokemon when you are just blowing them up in one hit. So I don't think that you're going to be using the GX attack now that isn't to say you couldn't use something like Don Wing's Necrozma GX in a Necrozma GX deck because Don Wing Necrozma's GX attack is actually insane and does very well in that deck. So we're not really looking at this thing for its GX attack, but that doesn't mean that it's not a good card. There are plenty of great GX Pokemon with suboptimal GX attacks. I'm looking right at you, Zorark GX. X. So, Ultra Necrozma GX, sweet Pokemon, insane attack. Is it the new Ray Eels? You decide. It's our number five Pokemon on our top 10. At the number four spot, we've got Malamar. Now, Malamar is one of the, if not the most hyped card from this set, but you can see it's not at my number one spot. I think Malamar will be good, but I don't think it is the absolute best card printed in the set, and you will see why. Malamar is a great card. It's got this amazing ability, Psychic Recharge. It single-handedly carries and bursts a new archetype in both standard and expanded formats and single-handedly carries our Ultra Necrozma GX as well. Psychic Pokemon have been waiting a long time for some sort of acceleration like this, and they finally get it. I mean, Psychic Pokemon have been having a rough time with energy acceleration. I don't remember in the six or seven years that I've been playing, there has not ever been Psychic Acceleration quite like this. Malamar's Psychic Recharge ability says once during your turn before you attack, you may attach a Psychic Energy card from your discard pile to one of your benched Pokemon. So much like Electric from Noble Victories, that Dynamotor ability, same thing, but in Psychic version, you get to charge Psychic Energy to your bench. Now, there are some amazing Pokemon that can take advantage of this. Obviously, we've got the Ultra Necrozma GX, Dawn Wings Necrozma GX, and then, of course, there's also Necrozma GX. Don't forget about our boy Necrozma GX with that Prismatic Burst. That thing's insane and can also do unlimited damage with Malamar. So Malamar could be a great archetype. It is definitely the saving grace for psychic Pokemon everywhere, not named Garbodor. So cool stuff for psychic Pokemon to come. Yes, Malamar does also have an attack that does 60 damage called Psychic Sphere, but I'm not exactly talking about that attack when we're talking about what makes this card so good. Good. Malamar, I think, is going to give birth to a brand new archetype. I think it's a really exciting card, which is why I've got it at the number four spot on our top 10. Coming in at number three, we've got my favorite card in this set, Diancy Prism. This card is nuts. I think it is so good. 
Oh my gosh, this thing adds 20 damage to all of your fighting Pokemon's attacks. That is incredible. It's called Princess's Cheers. The ability on this sweet Prism card. I think the artwork looks awesome. It's fighting type. I love fighting decks. It's got 120 hit points, a retreat of two. But honestly, I don't care what its stats are. It adds 20 damage to my fighting Pokemon's attacks. That is insane. Dex we're already playing one copy of Regirock in order to fix some numbers. One copy of Regirock EX was being played in Lucario GX decks, and one copy of Regirock was being played in Buzzwool Lycanroc decks. That Regirock will promptly be removed from those decks, and in will come Diancy. That I am absolutely sure of. And fighting decks have already been running the metagame so far this year. Fighting decks have been topping time and time again, and I think that the support that they get in this set is only going to improve them not only that this card can go with the Zygarde GX as well. There are just so many ways to use this Diancy Prism card. It's even got an attack, Diamond Rain for three fighting energy, does 90 damage and heal 30 damage from each of your benched Pokemon, which means that Buzzwole Lycanroc now has a actually pretty decent included card that can knock out the bemoaned Hoopa with that Scoundrel Barrier ability. So cool stuff from Diancy. This card is insane. It means that Buzzwool is going to be able to hit new heights with that knuckle impact that it did not even think was possible. I mean, knocking out things like Gardevoir GX, Solgaleo GX, that is no longer even a problem with this Diancy. You got Choice Band, Diancy. You've got Beast Energy. You've got Choice Band. You've got all this stuff. You've got Strong Energy. There are a million ways to pump up up Buzzwool's damage output for a basic Pokemon, where will he stop? This is insane. Buzzwool can do so much damage, and Diancy only makes it bigger. But we've also got Lucario, also got Zygarde. We've got three different fighting decks that are all going to love Diancy, which is why she's at our number three spot. The number two spot, the runner up on our top 10 list from Forbidden Light is Mystery Treasure. I love this thing, it is so good. It goes great in that Ultra Necrozma GX Malamar deck. It goes great in any Psychic deck. This card is nuts, it's an item card and it says discard a card from your hand. If you do, search your deck for a Psychic or a Dragon Pokemon, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. It's like an Ultra Ball that only works for Psychic and Dragon Pokemon, but you only have to discard one card. That is so good for this Malamar deck. In the Malamar deck, you're gonna want a lot of Pokemon Search. You can play this Mystery Treasure alongside Ultra Ball to make sure that you set up your Malamars in a quick and efficient manner. You can also choose to discard Psychic Energy with this card, which is amazing as well. Another thing I love about Mystery Treasure is that it allows you to thin your hand down really well. If you play this alongside Ultra Ball, that means that you have eight cards in your deck that can potentially discard cards. You could fail to search, which means that draw cards like Oranguru become even better in decks that play Mystery Treasure because you could just pare your hand down very easily, very quickly. Another huge benefit of Mystery Treasure, and oh my gosh, this is nuts, that if you play this card alongside Ultra Ball, that means that you have eight cards in your deck that could search for a turn one Lele. That means you have eight cards that allow you to go get a turn one Bridget, or you have eight cards that allow you to go get a turn one Lily. That is nuts, right? Ultra Ball for Lele, now Mystery Treasure for Lele. There are more options to make your decks more consistent, and I love that, and I love that what this card, I love what this card brings to deck building, I love what this card brings to Psychic type decks, and Dragon type decks alike. I think it is going to be a staple in those archetypes Types, which is why I've got it at the number two spot on our top 10. And finally, what I've got as our top card from Forbidden Light is Beast Ring. I've been talking about this thing for months. I think Beast Ring is the absolute 
best card in this set hands down i think it is going to be in tournament winning decks i think this thing is going to power up buzzwell beyond belief just the rebound power of beast ring is so insane it's an item card it reads you may play this card only when your opponent has three or four prize cards remaining it says search your deck for up to two basic energy cards reveal them and attach them to one of your ultra beasts then shuffle your deck what this card does is it allows you to rebound after your first Pokemon has gotten knocked out. So say you waste some Max Elixirs getting your first Buzz Wool going, then it gets taken down pretty promptly. You hit a couple Beast Rings, now you've got two Buzz Wools ready to go and clean out the rest of the game. The rebound power of this card is absolutely nutty and I cannot overestimate it. I really cannot. This card played alongside Max Elixir allows you to absolutely flood your field with energy. Buzzwool does not even care about Mew EX anymore. That's cute. A Mew EX comes and knocks out your Buzzwool. You can easily beast ring to another and then come swinging back at that Mew EX just as easily. Beast Ring, if you play it in enough copies, you got to play enough copies of this thing to actually hit it. Now, it does have that time clause. You have to hit it when your opponent only has three or four prize cards remaining. That means you have to be playing a deck that draws through the deck aggressively. You have to be playing enough copies of your Beast Ring so that you actually hit them. But oh my goodness, when you hit them, they turn the tide of the game completely. Now, Buzzwell is obviously my top pick for Beast Ring, but there are a bunch of other Pokemon you can power up as well. There's Duskmane Necrozma GX. There's Dawnwings Necrozma GX. There's also Ultra Necrozma GX, Nagandel GX, even Guzzlord. I mean, you could even power up a Guzzlord if you really wanted to. And then I think that Beast Ring has just got so much potential going forward with any Ultra Beast Pokemon that comes out. You've got to take Beast Ring into the equipment equation when considering that Pokemon's playability. I think Beast Ring is going to define the format. I think that it is going to put Buzzwool on a level that you're either playing it or you're trying to beat it. That's how good I think Beast Ring is. Now that's my prediction for the top card from Forbidden Light. Let me know what do you guys think is the best cards in Forbidden Light in the description below. What do you guys think of my list? Thank you all so much for watching the video. Again, Forbidden Light comes out on May 4th. I am very excited about this set. I think it's going to bring a lot of cool new things. I can't wait to show you guys the gameplays that we have. We've got these decks sleeved up and ready to go as well and show off in our brand new tabletop game cams as well. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, check out the Etsy store in the description below. Thank you all for watching. Peace.